Hey, what's up guys on YouTube? This is 3D Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. And this time I want to talk about perfect looping animations, just like this one. All right, so let's get started with it. All right, and as you can see, this animation has no clean start and no clean end. It just goes on forever and ever. It's up and down, up and down. And these bugs will just continue forever chasing this Ethereum coin. All right, so you want to know how I did it. Uh, let me explain it to you. Okay, so I think we should just hop into Cinema 4D and learn some basic techniques how you can make your animation loop perfectly. Okay, one last thing before we start. If you want to have the full package of Make Your Animations Loop Part 1, 2 and 3, this stuff will be on my Patreon, all right? In addition, you will get assets. I will share more of them. And in April 2021, you get 25% Easter discount, all right? So if you want all of the good stuff, be sure to check this one, 3D Bonfire. Plus, you can follow me on Instagram, it's Marcus Gonza 3 d And on Twitter, it's also Marcus Gonza 3 d okay? And by the way, these are all the assets I built just for this animation, okay? So if you want to make your stuff really unique, it's a good idea to sculpt your own creatures, your own assets. And I will also show this on Patreon, all right? So if you want to learn something about sculpting in Cinema 4D, just look how awesome this is looking. I also share this knowledge on my Patreon, okay? Enough of my Patreon, let's get started. And now I think it is the right time to go to Cinema 4D. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, finally in Cinema 4D, and you can see I already placed some of my assets from my latest animation. If you want to have them and even more, you know already the place for it, but you can totally follow along this training without these assets, okay? So in case of this bug creature, which I sculpted, by the way, in Cinema 4D, and uh, it's totally easy, but you could, of course, just use, a, let's see, a cylinder, for example, make it thinner, and let's say this is like a forever rolling cheese, like a cheese wheel from uh, Holland. Oh man, I'm talking crappy already. So you could have something like this, like a really delicious baby bell cheese. Um, you know the deal, okay? But in my case, I will use this creature here and I will use some other elements here, but you don't need them. So for now, let's just say this bug will roll on a spline on the landscape forever and ever without an start and end point and it's just amazing. And I think therefore you could use for example a helix if you want to have straight spline, just go inside your helix, put the start radius to zero and the end radius to zero, rotate it 90 degrees and there you have your spline. Give it more height for example 1500 so this will be 15 meters and I think this will be a good distance for our animation. Now I would say go to my bug and you can see this one comes with nested nulls. So this is my poly objects here. They are in a null and in the same position there is another null. So I can just be more precise with my animation. Sometimes you want to have that to just be more precise with your, with your keyframes. So just believe me it's awesome. <laughs> All right, now let's right click on this one and let's say align to spline. Okay, we have the spline. This is our helix, our movement. And now we can say, for example, let's say 120 frames for our animation. I think this will be a little bit too short. So let's put it to 150, for example. Let's go to the start and let's say position zero and on 150, put this one to 100. Okay, perfect. Now right click on it go to the F curve, STRTA, select both of them and make this one linear. All right, so now you can see we have a beautiful, beautiful rolling bug here. Uh, it's uh, super believable, right? So I think we need to enhance this. I guess what this animation really is lacking is some rolling parameters, some rotation and maybe a street, for example. So I guess first let's build a street. So I will just duplicate the helix and get a profile into my scene let's rotate it 90 and i guess this will be something like 150 and 2 mess this one up do it the other way around that looks better okay so now give me a sweep put both of them inside of it and the sweep should be just a little bit down right somewhere here that looks way more believable but now let's make this bug rotate okay and i guess you can put your rotation parameters here but in my case i just want to have it in the child null all right it's not really important in that case but uh, i just do it like that so put this one to zero go to 150 
And let's say, I'm not sure. So put this one to a thousand, for example. Let's check the animation. All right, so now you can see this one doesn't really feel believable, right? I mean, this looks like uh, uh, really crazy. So I guess this number is just not high enough. And of course, this one should also be linear. So go inside of it. SDRGA to select both of them, make this one linear. All right, it's better, but of course, this animation parameter is not high enough. So let's try something like 2000. Let's see if this one is more believable. Hmm, let's see. Maybe it helps to see the lines here. No, that didn't help. Let's just see. I think it's still sliding. So I guess this parameter needs to be still higher. So let's say this one goes up to 2500. Check it once more. That feels more believable. All right, almost. Let me try to put this one to 3000 just to see if this will make it even better. This seems to be something like the magic number, okay? So I will just stick to 3000 here. But now how we can frame this and that this one will be really looping in your camera, right? So I guess we want to put a null here. Let's go to zero. All right, the null is starting here. Okay, so I will just say this null will be on zero here. And after 150, this one will be 1500, right? Of course, this is 1500 because this is the length of our spline and the camera also needs to travel the same distance. Okay, so now you can just grab a camera, put it inside of the null. Let's go over there. Let's frame this one. And now, okay, I'm losing it a little bit here. So, and of course, this is once again because of our spline interpolation. Okay, perfect. Now you can see the camera is always aligned to this bug and it's going on and on forever, okay? What just is a little bit distracting here is that the last frame, we don't have any street again and also in the beginning. So I guess we just want to duplicate the street, put this one to 1500, all right? And another one to minus 1500. Now, if I will check this one, this will go on forever. Let's see. Yes. That is perfect. And you will think this is a perfect looping animation, but you are wrong because the last frame and the first one are, oh, they are not the same. Oh, they should be the same, right? If you hold down Shift F, you go to the first one, Shift G, you go to the last one. And you can see I'm jumping from frame zero to frame 150, but these ones are not the same. And I think the problem is just that our rotation parameter needs to be in increments of 360, right? So if you want to have a repeating starting and end position, of course, this number here, now where is it? Where is it? This one needs to be in increments of 360, right? So, so if we put this one to 360, you can see we have one loop of our animation of the rotation. And now the last one, and the first one are the same, right? But we already recognize that we need to have a higher rotation parameter, something around 3000, right? So maybe we just click here, say times nine, and we get a clean increment of 360. And now the last one and the first one are the same frames. All right, that feels a little bit fast, but I guess it's correct. So now this one will loop, but to make it really loop, now you have to just cut away one frame here, right? So do it like this. And now you don't have a repeating frame at the beginning and the end. Okay, so just be sure if you are done with your animation just to cut away one frame. Okay, so this one is rolling. That's nice. And now you could go and make your scene more interesting. All right, so how about we just make this more interesting, right? So far, we just have this rolling bug here on the street, but I think this is quite boring. So how about some beautiful columns here? And you can see this one from my project looks pretty nice. I sculpted this one in Cinema 4D, and there is also a lesson on my Patreon how you can do this. But for now, you just build your own or you just grab my asset. And I think we want to have this one placed on this side and our distance of our spline is 1500 centimeters so if i would just repeat this one duplicate it put it at 1500 we would already have a perfect spline here and i think i just want to make this one invisible and also the rows and also this creature maybe these ones so now you will see 
now I go from beginning to the end and now this one will repeat. So if I would just play this one, again, this is a perfect animation. And here is our column again. That's nice and it is great because it is looping perfectly. But I think I just want to have this one in smaller increments and I think I want to make my life a little bit more easy by holding down Alt and just give me a cloner here. Let's set this one to linear. And I think I want to set this one to render instances so it will be faster in the calculation and no position in the Y axis, but in the X axis. And I think I want to have something like 150, for example. Mm, no, that seems to be too small. So put it to 300. And I guess we want to have something like five iterations here. And now the distance should always match up. And oh, I need one more. So if I hold down Shift F, you can see this is the first frame and the last one. And this one doesn't line up because I can see I have some value inside this one. So once again, you can see this is lining up perfectly. And when I would just play this one, this will be amazing. Okay, pretty sweet. And now you can make this more and more complex and uh, the sky is the limit. So let me just show you once more my animation. All right, so you can see this one is getting pretty complex, right? But the principles behind it are pretty much the same. I just built more of these creatures, put really a lot of love into it and um, just try to make this one amazing. And if you think this tutorial is amazing, don't forget to ring the bell here on YouTube and subscribe to this channel. And now I would say you can just build up from these basic foundations. You can of course check the additional lessons on my Patreon. There are also lessons on the sculpting part and I will share more of these assets. So feel free to make your most amazing looping animations you have ever done in your life. And thank you so much for listening. See you next time. Bye guys. One last thing for every one of you who are into NFTs on Foundation app, of course you will find me there. And this one is listed for 1.3 Ether. And I think it's a very fair price because I put a lot of work into this one. So if you want to have it, go to Foundation.